An arithmetic and geometric sequence are combined to form a pattern. Right, so when they say that an arithmetic and a geometric are combined, it usually means that one term is arithmetic and then the next one is geometric, or the first one's geometric and then the next one's arithmetic, and then it keeps changing like that. Now, I can already see that this term and this term and this term, they are the geometric. How do I see that? Well, I know that to go from here to here, you have to multiply by one over three. And to go from here to here, you have to also multiply by one over three. If you didn't see that, you can also say this term, divide this term, and you'll get one over three. And then if you say this term, divide this term, you would also get one over three. So this, this, and this, that's the geometric, the one with R. So that's gonna be, actually let's do this, do that. And then the other ones, that would have to be the arithmetic. And we can also show that, that those X's are gonna be arithmetic. Of course, we don't know what X is, but even if you had to look at what is this term minus this term. Remember with arithmetic, we're not gonna say divide, you're gonna say minus. You know when you say like T2 minus T1 um, for arithmetic, and then with geometric, we usually do T2 over T1, because in geometric, we look at the ratio, whereas in arithmetic, we look at the difference. So even if you had to say 2X minus X, that'll just give you 1X. And if you then had to take um, this one minus this one, 2x, 3x minus 2x, that'll also give you 1x. You see how the difference remains the same? So yeah, it's definitely arithmetic. So the first question says, write down the next two terms. Okay, so it's gonna be this one that comes next, so it would be 4x. So that would be 4x, I'll write it over here as well. Then the next one would be this pattern. So you would just multiply that by one over three and that would give you one over 81. So those would be the next two terms. This question says, determine the general term TN for the odd terms. Now this is where I've had questions about this um, in the past. Um, a few months ago, I had a learner ask me about this paper and I hadn't, um, I hadn't recorded the paper, obviously. I'm only recording this paper now but they, they were getting very confused with odd terms. They were looking for all the odd numbers, but no, they said the odd terms. So remember, this is term one, this is term two, this is term three, this is term four, that's term five, on and on and on. So the odd ones, they're not talking about odd over here, they're talking about odd over here the odd terms. So that would be term one, term three, term five. So they're talking about the arithmetic pattern, actually. Well, why don't you guys just say arithmetic pattern over here, whoever set the paper? No, I'm joking. Obviously they like to challenge us a little bit, hey? So, because our lives aren't stressful enough as they are. So we have to be challenged. <laughs> so it says, determine the general term for the odd terms. So it's pretty much just gonna be the arithmetic pattern. Um, write down your answer in terms of x. Okay, so we know that if it's arithmetic, then we use this formula for tn. And so let's just get rid of all this now. So remember, we're not looking at this and this and this right now. So term one in this pattern is gonna be x. The number of terms we don't know, we leave that as an unknown. And then what was the common difference? Well, I showed it to you over here, it's just x. You can say one X or X, it doesn't matter. And then, um, I mean, technically that would be correct, but it's usually better to go simplify. So the way that you would simplify this is you would multiply this X into the bracket. So it would become X N minus X. Oh, that's lovely because then these two X's are gonna cancel. And so the answer is just gonna be X N. Wonderful. Okay, type of answer that'll give you a heart attack in the test. It's like, what? I've never seen something like this before. Am I doing it right? Oh no, my life's a lie. <laughs> That's the thought you would have in the exam if that had to happen. Well, at least when I was a student, probably. Um, XN. All right, there we go. 
This question, ooh, this is quite a good one. It says calculate the value of P26. So this is the P uh, sequence. So let's just get rid of this now. So now it means that everything is included. So now you've got to think carefully. Where would 26 be? Would 26 be a part of the arithmetic pattern? Or would it be a part of the geometric pattern? Well, remember that the arithmetic is term 1, term 3, term 5. So it's all the odd terms. 26 is an even number. So it's going to be part of the geometric. Uh huh. So we're going to use the geometric formula. But now be careful. We're not going to go find term 26 now. Because what you must imagine is that we take the, the geometric sequence out of this thing. So now we just have 1 over 3, 1 over 9, 1 over 27. So if it's term number 26 inside this pattern, what term number would it be if, it, if we break it out into its own one? Wouldn't it be term 13? Let me explain. If we look at this sequence over here, what is this term number? It's term number 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. But in its own sequence, 1, 2, 3. It's term number 3. It's half because we're removing half the, the things. So term 26 inside here would actually just be term 13 in its own sequence. Make sense? So don't put a 26 here, because then you are saying that there are 26 terms in the geometric formula, because this is a geometric. There's only 13, so we're going to go find term 13 over here. Let's write it here. Right. Now, what is A? Don't put X. Remember, this is the geometric sequence. So A is term 1 inside its own sequence. Mm, there's a couple areas here where learners can get confused. And then R, what is R? Well, I showed you how to get R earlier. We said that it was 1 over 3, remember? Um, when you say term 2 divided by term 1, use these ones. Don't use these ones because um, we're looking at specifically the geometric. You would say 1 over 9 divided by 1 over 3, and that would give you 1 over 3. And so R is going to be 1 over 3. Now, N is going to be 13, right? We're going to say 13 minus 1. Fantastic. It's a very good question. That question right there tests the depth of your understanding. Because it's very easy to just be like, oh, are we, bro? A. Yeah, yes, it's bro. Oh, I know this stuff. A is always the first term. And then N. Yeah, of course, bro. 26. you got to be careful. you got to think carefully what you're doing, okay? So, I always whip out the Josie accent. Even though I've probably been to Joburg like twice in my whole life, but for some reason I always go there mentally. <laughs> 13 minus 1. Some of you are like, Kevin, wait, you've only been to Joburg twice. Bro, are you even South African? Where do you live? I'm a Cape Townian, brother. And then 13, oh, what an ugly answer. It's 1 over 1, 5, 9, 4, 3, 2, 3. You can also write this in a different way. I, th I think one of the other answers was like 6.27 times 10 to the negative or whatever, something. Um, that is also sufficient, okay? And then, so we've done we've done that one. Okay, let's create a bit of space here. I should win an award for how tidy I am. I've never seen someone as tidy as me. Okay, now that was obviously a joke. I know I'm not the most tidy, guys, but I'm always trying my best. Always doing gonna try be better. Okay, I don't know what accent I was even going for there. I think it was like I was going for like a little goody two shoes nerd. Um, just love to do mathematics all day long. Okay, <laughs> well, um, right. So then, calculate the value of p twenty six. I've become so conscious of not making too many jokes anymore because I've had so many memes on TikTok made. Well, not so many. I mean. I'm not like Justin Bieber here, but I've had like three or four um, memes of people making jokes. Not jokes, but like, it's like passive aggression I see in their videos. They make funny videos of like, it's two o'clock in the morning and Kevin's out here making jokes. And then they make videos on TikTok of, <laughs> of their frustration at that. So I've become conscious about it now. So I tried to not be myself anymore. I just do serious maths all the time. All right, next question, 2.2.4.
And okay, no. Obviously, I always try to add a bit of my own, you know. I've got my own little. I like to add my little jokes in there, but yeah. Uh, I don't know if you've seen my video. I can't remember what video it was, but I start the video. I think it's an exam paper. <clears throat> and I. I go on a rant of for like 10 minutes about coffee. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> some learners weren't very impressed. I can understand it though. Like, like if, you, if you're sitting right now and you have a test in like three hours and then you've got this Bali on the other side of the internet who's busy talking about the most random SHIT, then yeah, I guess it could get frustrating. <laughs> So I do apologize. Um, all right, so then Kev, let's move on. You're doing it again. So calculate the value of P26. We've done that. We now have um, 1 over 1594323. Okay, um, determine the general term. We've done that. Okay, so now we are over here. If this ugly expression is that, determine the value of X. Right, now, I've mentioned this a lot of times. Learners get super caught out in these questions. They think that PN is equal to 33.5. That's what learners do. They think that that is what that is over there. So then what they go do is they go make this expression equal to that. But that is not what they're saying. They are saying this is equal to 33.5. Ah, oh, some of you are like, Kiev, what's the difference, Baru? Like, what's a, what does it matter if I include that one or if I do that one and that one? No, it's a huge difference, brother. Um, this part, when you, when you include this part, it means the sum of. Whereas if you just use this part, it just means the sequence. But when you have the sigma, it's sum of. Oh, okay, Kiev, whatever, Baru. Okay, let's carry on. So... Um, right, where are we? Determine the value of x. Okay, so they're saying that the sum of this um, expression up to 21 terms. How do I know it's 21 terms? Is it because there's a 21 there? Well, not actually. It's because there's a 21 there and this number is a 1. But if this number was a 2, then, this, then the number of terms would not be 21. I've showed you how to do this before. To work out the number of terms, it's always, say it with me, top number minus bottom number plus 1. And so in this case, it would be 21 minus the bottom number, which is 1 plus 1. So in this case, the 1s cancel out, and so you end up with 21. And the problem is, is that most of your teachers, when they show you this in class, they always give you examples where this number is a 1. And so in your head, you have now subconsciously made, you've been made to believe that this number represents the number of terms. But it's only true when this number at the bottom is 1. Mm. So just rather remember this, okay? So there are 21 terms. Determine the value of x. Right, so what you need to understand is that the sequence goes x, 1 over 3, 2x, 1 over 9, 3x, 1 over 27. Then it goes 4x, 1 over 81. Then it would go 5x, and then it would go 1 over 243 then 6x. No, I'm not going to do the whole thing. Okay, so they want to know what is the sum of, well, well, they told us the sum of 21 terms is 33.5, and from that we'd be able to work out x. Okay, let's get rid of all of this. So 21 is a bit of an awkward number, because if they said 20, then we would say, oh, well, then that obviously means 10 of the arithmetic, and then 10 of the geometric. But when they say 21, what do you do? Do you say 10 and a half of the one and 10 and a half of the other? No, you can't. So how do you know? One of them is going to be 10 terms and one of them is going to be 11. Well, the one that starts first will always be the one that's more. I'll show you an example. Let's say they said there were nine terms. So nine terms goes up to four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine goes up to here. So you would see that the one that's first will probably be five terms. One, two, three, four, five. And then the other one would be four. One, two, three, four. You see what I mean? When they give you an odd number, then the sequence that starts first would always be the more powerful one. So that means there's 21 terms. So that means it's going to be 11 
of this one, 11 terms of the arithmetic, and then 10 terms of the geometric. So that's going to be 11 terms arithmetic plus 10 terms geometric. All right. So what we can now do is we can go do the sum formula for the arithmetic plus the sum term of the geometric. And we know that the answer of all of those, this one will be for 11 terms, and this one will be for 10 terms. The answer must be 33.5. So let's get rid of this. I need a bit more space. So we know that the sum of an arithmetic is, um, we know it's this formula, n over 2, 2a plus n minus 1 times d. And then we know that the sum of a geometric is... Um, a bracket 1 minus r to the power of n over 1 minus r. You can also flip the 1 minus r to r minus 1, but then just make sure you do it at the top and the bottom. Um, then it works out perfectly fine. Okay, so I'm now going to, I'm just trying to think of my space here. Okay, so for this one, I'm going to write it over here. So it would be, um, we said it's going to be the arithmetic, which is going to have 11 terms. So the sum of 11 terms would look like this. Now, what is A for that sequence? It was X, right? Or you could say X over here. So X, 11 terms. And what was the common difference? Well, I showed that to you earlier. We said it was just X. Remember that. So we can just do that and then close the bracket. Okay, so that's what that expression would look like. We could go simplify it a little bit. So 11 over 2 is 5.5, 2x plus, now this is just 10, so this will just be 10x, 10x. And so 2x plus 10x is 12x. And then if you just multiply 5.5 with 12, you get 66. So that's gonna be 66x. Some of you are like, Kev, shouldn't you multiply the 5.5 with the x as well? Uh, we sort of, we just have to do it all at once. But what you're thinking of is this. I've had this question a lot. You're thinking of that. Okay, not the same. All right, so we now know that um, this one is going to be 66x. So we can sub it into here later on. Then um, I'm now going to go work on... Okay, I'm gonna, sorry about the space issue, guys. Okay, so I'm going to use this one now over here. And so it's going to be 10 terms, because remember, we're only using, um, we said it's only going to be 10 terms for the geometric. So remember, for A now, you're not going to say X, you're going to say 1 over 3, because we're using term 1 of this new pattern of the geometric. And then R, we worked out earlier, is a third. And then the number of terms is only going to be 10. Don't say 26, don't say... Um, 21, it's got to be the sequence that you are working with at that time. Okay, um, S10. And then at the bottom, we're just going to have one minus a third. Now here we have no variables, so you can go type that all in on your um, calculator. Okay, and we can just round that to two decimal places. It's just going to be 0, 0,5, 0. Because it was like 0, 0,4, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9. Um, 15325. So we can just round that to 0 0.5. Right, now we can come back to this little equation over here where we said that the two sequences added together must give us 33.5. So for the arithmetic, we got it as 66x. And for the geometric, we got it as 0 0.5. And look how simplified that is now. So now we just take the 0 0.5 over to the other side where it becomes a minus. So 66x equals um, 33. And then don't say the answer is 2. A lot of you are going to look at this and your mind is immediately going to think, oh, 2. And you're just going to say x is 2. But be careful. x is going to be 33 divided by 66, which is actually a half.